Hello people, in this video we want to look at the symptoms and signs of acute appendicitis. So what do we want to look at? Only the clinical features, right, in this video. So how will the patient present to you? That is what we want to look at. So this patient usually will come with only three things that you have to remember. Colicky pain around the umbilicus and that will be where it initially will be the pain. And after some time the pain has shifted to the right iliac fossa. This is the most uh, reliable symptom of acute appendicitis is what the textbook says. It's the most reliable symptom of acute appendicitis. So remember, so there is a pain that is shifting, shifting pain of acute appendicitis. This is what you have to remember, point number one. Now, uh, if you want some more details as to why this happens, why in at the umbilicus due to distension of the appendix, appendix has become swollen, uh, large. So that is why at the umbilicus and later, it gets localized to the right iliac fossa because of the inflammation of the parietal peritoneum. Okay, so this is the cause. So this person will have some abdominal tenderness, you can see. Now coming to um, uh, nausea and vomiting. This is the second thing we want you to focus on, nausea and vomiting. Why does vomiting happen and what vomiting is this person doing? Stomach contents are getting vomited. And vomiting is due to the reflex spirospasm. That is of your stomach pyro pyloric sphincter is there, right? Yeah. So uh, this is not frequent, they are not going to frequent, uh, frequently vomit like an intestinal obstruction etc. It's not that frequent and obviously vomiting is that they can have some amount of anorexia, right? Now pyrexia they can have, pyrexia this is the third thing that you have to know. The third thing is what? Pyrexia. What are we looking at? Ac acute appendicitis symptoms, only three things. Pain which is colicky, the type of pain is colicky, nausea, vomiting, vomiting, pyrexia, mild fever, because it could be of bacterial inflammation. When somebody has fever, they can have an increased pulse rate. Tachycardia can be there, right? Now, coming to the other things which they are not very uh, uh, sure that it's this or that, constipation can be there, but diarrhea also can be there in some other type of appendicitis. So just remember, constipation, but in some types of uh, appendicitis, there can be diarrhea, okay? Excellent people, you have completed the symptoms of appendicitis. Now let us go to the signs of appendicitis, okay? Now uh, here is the cute appendix, so we have to find the signs of the inflammation of this appendix here. Let us find the signs, okay? Now uh, there is cough tenderness, it's called as Dunphy's sign. Look at this. Again, because of the inflammation of the parietal peritoneum, there is something called as a Dunphy's sign. Uh, there is one thing that you should understand, guys. Whenever you draw this kind of diagram, now you will get a lot of marks. This kind of uh, didn't come out so beautifully. This type of diagram you should draw in the exam, okay? Abdomen and then uh, joining the umbilicus and the anterior superior iliac spine. Then dividing it into three parts. This point is called what? The McBurney point, right? So basically, this and all if you draw, now you will get very good marks. Now let us look at this Dunphy sign. So this indicates the inflammation of the parietal peritoneum. It's an important physical sign. Uh, which differentiates this acute appendicitis from right-sided ureteric colic. Okay, so something to do with the ureter, you can differentiate. This is the McBurney point. Obviously, you uh, you're checking for some tenderness here, right? Then there is rebound tenderness and tenderness at the McBurney point. This is the same point that we showed you. This um, uh, rebound tenderness that when you press at this point and leave, the patient will have pain. This is called as the Bloomberg sign. This is also so many signs are there in acute appendicitis and. Uh, what you should understand is acute appendicitis is so common, appendicitis is so common and it is a surgical emergency. So this signs and all uh, will fetch you a lot of marks. This So this question is very important, acute appendicitis. Now let's move on guys. To the third point here, guarding and rigidity are present in the right iliac fossa. Both are present, okay. Guarding is what? Guarding is generalized and it is voluntary. So the patient, entire abdominal wall, he will contract the musculature, right? It is all over abdomen. Okay, uh, but rigidity is um, is involuntary kind of thing. It is only uh, the inflamed area. Okay, so this is what you will feel. And it is present where in the right iliac fossa. Guarding and rigidity uh, of back muscles also. If there is, a, are you able to see back muscles also? If there is guarding and rigidity, it can indicate rectocecal appendicitis. The rectocecal is the most common uh, position of the appendix, isn't it? So this is what you should keep in mind, it looks like. And in retrocecal, there is no gar rigidity in the right iliac fossa. That's what you should remember here. It is silent. There is no rigidity in the right iliac fossa, but it can be in the be there in the back muscles. Did you understand at all? See, retrocecal is this one, which they have marked in green in the box, but actually it is this one. We will draw it on that. See, 
it's in dotted line and is behind the cecum. So this is retro cecal. This is 12 o'clock position. This is the most common, 65%. So in this, what will happen as it is behind, in the right iliac fossa, there will be no rigidity. This is called a silent. But behind, it can be there. Okay. What are we looking at, people? The signs of acute appendicitis. Now let us move on to this roving. No, roving sign and uh, the other one here. So first, let us look at roving sign. Roving sign is if you press in the left iliac fossa, the pain will be there in the right iliac fossa. Why? Because of some movement of some gas and some small intestine loops, they are saying. So this is what is the cause of roving sign. So when you deep palpate, they are saying, starting from the left iliac fossa upwards. Okay. This may cause pain in the right iliac fossa. Why? Because you are pushing the bowel contents towards the ileocecal valve and thus increasing pressure. This sounds right. But here the textbook says the displacement of this. Okay, okay. So it is going towards the appendix. Okay, fine. Now let us move on guys. Uh, Rovsing, Rovsing, Rovsing is what? Rovsing is I press left and will get pain in right. Okay. Very good. Now let's go to the fifth one here. Hyperesthesia in the Sharon triangle. Hyperesthesia means more sensation, right? Let's check how much more sensation they have in the Sharon triangle. This is the Sharon triangle, anterior superior iliac side, pubic symphysis, umbilicus. This is the Sharon triangle. Here they'll have hyperesthesia. Okay. So it is formed by the anterior superior iliac spine, umbilicus and pubic symphysis. It is due to the irritation of lower abdominal nerves. Obviously, this entire place, there is some inflammation. We can understand. We can understand, don't we? Yeah. People, so far you looked at five signs. Can you name them? Yeah. D U N P H Y sign. Dunphy sign. Lumberg sign. Guarding Lumberg. Voluntary. All over abdomen and rigidity. Guarding rigidity. Rofsing sign. Rofsing sign. Hyperesthesia in the Sharon's triangle. Very good. Dunphy sign. Bloomberg sign. Rebound tenderness. Guarding rigidity. Rofsing sign and uh, hyperesthesia in the Sharon's triangle. Okay, very good. See, but it is not over yet. It's not over yet. We still have five more guys according to this uh, textbook. So you have the next sign is this uh, psoas uh, uh, test. Okay. Cope's psoas test. So what will happen? This person would have flexed the hip. Okay. If you try to extend, he'll have pain. Okay. Is this fine? So as simple as that, right? There's flexion at the hip. If you make attempt to extend it, there is pain. Then there's obturator test. So this is uh, Cope's, Cope's obturator test. Can you say Cope's? Copes. Soas test. Soas test. Copes. Copes. Obturator test. Obturator test. Obtu yeah. Obturator test. So, in this obturator test, no. Flexion and medial rotation will produce pain. Understand that the flexion produces pain here. So, in the obturator one, what they are saying? Flexion, that is they are pushing it in. And medial rotation, that is what is producing pain for these people. It's kind of little ulta, right? This obturator sign, did you notice it's only in the pelvic appendicitis? Where is pelvic? Pelvic, see here? Pelvic appendicitis. Where is pelvic appendicitis? Pelvic, pelvic, come on, show pelvic. Here, pelvic, 4 o'clock position. This is the second most common actually. Can we highlight it in this special green? We don't have this green. We have some other green. Okay, this one. This is the 4 o'clock. So in this one, you will have the Cope's obturator test, right? What about the Cope's, um, Cope's, uh, so ask this. This will be in the retro cecal. Did you notice? This is very important. You can't simply say that this will be there in everything. The pelvic one will have obturator. The retro cecal, retro cecal will have the psoas. Okay. Now let's move on guys to the eighth one. We are already at the eighth sign of appendicitis. Very good. Very good. Now uh, generalized peritonitis you will see when there is a rupture. We don't like this. Generalized peritonitis. What are the features of generalized peritonitis? What what are the features? In this, there can be pain, systemic shock. That's not at all nice because there's rupture, isn't it? That looks scary to us. What else? This peritonitis, etc., is more common in uh, elderly pa patients and young infants and etc. Okay, looks like. Let's look at them. Last two signs, guys, we have reached the, almost the end of looking at the symptoms and signs of acute appendicitis. So you should be able to identify this patient. Come on, let's do it. The last two signs. These look very um, invasive. The rectal examination and the pervaginal examination. Okay, so rectal examination, there is tenderness in the right rectal wall, differential tenderness. 
पर वेजाइनल प्रेजेंस ऑफ ओवेरियन मास टेंडरनेस एंड मूवमेंट ऑफ द सर्विक्स टेंडरनेस ऑन मूवमेंट ऑफ द सर्विक्स एंड नेक्सल टेंडरनेस मे सजेक्ट सम ऑब्स्ट्रेक्टिक पैथोलॉजी सो इफ देर इज अ टेंडरनेस ऑन मूवमेंट ऑफ सर्विक्स इट इज सम अदर रीजन इट इज नॉट अपेंडिसाइटिस ओके इट मे सजेस्ट मोर ऑफ ऑब्स्ट्रेक्टिक पैथोलॉजी ओके so this is what they are telling all this investigations sorry these are the clinical examinations you should do as a doctor for appendicitis did you get it guys next we will move on to com investigations and the differential diagnosis etc bye bye there's just one thing here in the uh, pain right whatever we told you this uh, the patient will come with pain um, uh, this pain colicky pain see in pregnancy the location of the pain is shifted higher up and laterally okay just note this here this one point if the person is pregnant the pain will be if you are expecting the pain to be at the macburney point here what the textbook is saying is that in a pregnant woman it will be more higher up and lateral okay the pain in a pregnant in pregnancy probably because of the growing uterus right so that we have added here in pregnancy the location of the pain is shifted higher up and lateral okay 